In this module, I demonstrate the calculation of annuities using the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus calculator in the emulator mode. Now here's a timeline for an ordinary annuity of $100 for three years, which means the equal amount of $100 at the end of each year over a three-year period. So basically what we want to know is what would the, be the terminal value or the final value which is FV of this stream of equal payments. So stream of equal payments over equal intervals of time is basically an annuity. Now some back of the envelope kind of calculation would indicate there will be at least $300 and if the interest rate is let's say 10%, so 10% of 300 that's, that's $30, so that's, it should be at least $330. However, we'll see that the answer is slightly different and it's because we do not start with the same amount over the entire period of time. And so it becomes a little tricky. You're, you're, you, you earn 10% on this 100 and so that becomes 110. And then at this point you have 100 plus 110 and then you earn 10% 10 per, 10 on the $210. All of that is easily accomplished by using this calculator. So here's a setup for that. Number of time period is three, n equals three. Interest per year is 10%. You start with nothing, so that's why present value is zero. You're depositing $100 into the bank at the end of each year, so that's 100 and you want to calculate its future value so to compute FV and that's $331. So the way to think of this problem is that suppose you're depositing $100 at the end of each year. So you just graduated, you start off with nothing and at the end of each year you have some savings and that's $100 and somehow magically you're able to earn 10% or you find a bank that's willing to give you 10% and it's over three years you'll end up with $331. flip side of this is, now you can clear the screen like this, what's the present value of this ordinary annuity? So now it's like driving the car in reverse. So the present value of $100 at the end of one year, but the present value today is going to be less than $100. And that is just a basic fact. Uh, it's, it's typically said that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow because there's risk involved in between. And if that's not clear, suppose I say to you that um, would you rather take a dollar from me today or $10,000 from me at the end of 100 years? And most of you will probably go for the dollar. And for the few that are not sure about it, if I say a dollar today from me or $100,000 at the end of 10,000 years from now, then you definitely go for the dollar today. So the concept is the same, I just introduce a, a, a different dimension to it. So 100 divided by 1.1 to the power one. Uh, let's see if I can show you this way here. Is uh, 100 divided by 1.1 to the power 1. And this would be 100 divided by 1.1 to the power 2. I encourage you to, um, to do the simple calculation and you will find that 100 divided by 1.1 is 90.91. 100 divided by 1.1 squared is 82.64. And this would be um, the same thing, 1.1 to the power 3. You add these three items up. Oh, that was not a good... Uh, add these three amounts and you 
we get the present value of the stream as two hundred forty eight dollars and sixty nine cents that's your present value let's use a calculator to solve this problem The setup is similar, n equals 3, interest per period is 10, that's 10% 10 a year, now we're saying um, the, the, the payment is 100, um, which does not, will not numerically change our calculation, but it basically means that we are withdrawing $100 from a bank account. So a way to think of it is what would you have to deposit today to be able to withdraw $100 at the end of each year. So, so suppose you know you wanna organize your finances for, uh, for the next three years and you say well for, for, for Christmas every year you need to withdraw $100. So you need to deposit a certain amount and then come Christmas you can withdraw a certain amount an equal fixed amount and um, after three years it's important to notice that there'll be nothing remaining in the in the account and that's where this very important future value equals zero comes into play notice it's not really part of the problem here there's nowhere in here that you see that future value is zero but the way it is set up and this is what you'll get when you uh, start practicing some of the end of chapter problems is um, how to interpret the question and translate the words into numbers and the numbers into buttons on a calculator and eventually whatever the output comes has to be uh, translated back into words because end of the day it's an actionable item and a concept so anyway once you have that then you do compute present value and there you go you get two hundred forty eight dollars and sixty eight cents and at actually 0.685 cents and as I said it basically means that you can deposit $248.69 in a bank which offers you 10% a year for the next three years and you can withdraw $100 at the end of each year and at the end of the third year you'll have nothing remaining in the account all right this can also be done uh, on a spreadsheet and I know some of you will work or probably are working in the industry and in the industry you basically don't use this calculator I mean you, you I mean it is used by mortgage originators and also auto loan specialists they use it um, but if you're a financial analyst the your uh, your the, 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 the set of numbers is is it's just it's, it's just a very large set and uh, so use Excel there so you can use the PV function to calculate the present value of an annuity or an FE function to calculate um, the future value of an annuity. The arguments are rate, which is interest rate. That's a N per is the number of periods, the payment amount, and future value. And that's your present value there. And you get 248 here and 331 there. And you can try that out using Excel. Now here's an interesting twist. Find the future value and present value if the annuity were an annuity due. Now this, this throws in a little bit of a complication here. Annuity due, which is different from what we had done is basically called an ordinary annuity and the difference is subtle but it's significant notice that all your payments they have moved up earlier all of these were here one two and three this typically happens in a rental situation. Maybe you have realized, maybe you haven't. Maybe you rent, maybe you don't. 
But if you do, it's good to know that you actually pay the rent on a place before you actually occupy it. So you pay the rent on the first of the month and then you're allowed to live for the next 30 days. So that's how it was. What end of the day, why we are doing all this kind of uh, numerical gymnastics is that there's an extra one plus I compounding factor that gets added to it. So the landlord, she gets to collect the interest on an extra period. And that's called an annuity due, so that would make sense. It's due at the beginning of the period. Now the calculation for that, it's all simple, you know, it's just, you just have to know it. Okay, let me need to raise this out here. I'll first show you now how the setup is. And there's a begin and an end mode in your calculator. It's a less known and less used feature. It's a very powerful feature. So let's enter these numbers. N equals three. Interest per period is 10. Payment is 100. So you're making the payment, that's why it's plus. The future value is zero. Let's do compute present value. We get 248, which we had done. But we want to solve an annuity due. So we do second, and here's begin here. It's hidden right here, you can see. It's second payment. Now it's calculator is prompting you to hit the set button. How do we do that? That's sort of not intuitive, and that's the purpose of why I'm having these modules. Second, and then hit the enter button, set. And now you see the begin um, text appear to the top right of your screen. If you clear it, the begin remains there. Now basically, you have um, set your calculator in the begin mode. So that means all the payments are shifted one period back. Let's do compute present value. And you get minus 273. 0.554. Notice the present value of this is higher. Now let's go back the other way. Basically, the present value of an annuity due is just about the same as the present value of an ordinary annuity multiplied by an extra interest rate factor. And so to the landlord, an annuity due is more valuable. That's the real intuition, interpretation of that. So if it's an annuity due, it's more valuable to them because the present value of that is $273 as opposed to $248. So what would the future value of this annuity be? Well, earlier we had calculated the future value of the ordinary annuity was 331 so you can just multiply it by the interest rate factor 1.1 and you get 364. But let's see if that's what the what we have here. So compute future value and that's 364.1. You have Excel functions for energies used to and you have um, you can calculate the present value of the future value and here's the interest rate, here's the number of periods, and uh, here's your annuity amount. And then there are two extra arguments. The zero, it tells the function that there are no other cash flows. And the fifth term, which is this, tells that it's an annuity due. If it's not an annuity due, you just put a zero there. That concludes this module on calculating annuities. This is Pank Agarwal, PhD Finance, giving you a tutorial on this.